Stephen, omega-3. Everyone should be getting more of it? Most of us should be getting more of it. Tell me the story. Why? Well, the issues are, are the same health issues that have, have dogged us uh, for, for half a century. Um, it's the question of heart health, it's a question of cancer protection, it's a question of brain health. The development of the baby's brain has been under intense scrutiny since the 1970s. Uh, the evidence has gradually but persistently uh, shown us that, that DHA and, and some of the other omega-3s, but particularly DHA, is obviously key to, to successful brain development. In the 1970s, we weren't thinking about degenerative brain diseases. We weren't worried that much about Alzheimer's disease, about cognitive decline, but the proportion of the population that is now considered to be elderly is growing. And, and the disease, uh, the Alzheimer's disease, is now a major health, public health preoccupation. It looks like it's protective for the, the aging brain. So it's not just that we need to worry about the infant and after that, uh, it's smooth sailing. Uh, Omega-3s are involved in cancer protection. All of the Omega-3s are involved in cancer protection through mechanisms that uh, I, I can't begin to explain, but the evidence is there. Uh, heart health as well, blood pressure. So this isn't a nutrient that we're recommending for one aspect of health and that someone else is recommending something else for a different aspect. It's, it's recommended for all aspects of, of healthy uh, development and, and adult uh, life. Is it as simple as someone taking a pill or does there need to be a change in diet? Well, I'm reluctant to suggest that a pill is a, is a substitute for, for the diet because the diet is more than the nutrients. It's a style of living. It's a way we live. Um, and so if you take a glass of wine with your fish, for instance, you're not going to have the wine with, with, with a fish oil capsule. Uh, you might sit down for longer if you sit down and chat over a glass of wine and a, and a fish meal. So there's a number of things that help get the stress out of our lives about healthy. The preparation of the food takes a little longer. Uh, none of us have time for that, but that's a little bit, it all accumulates as part of the problem. So I think we eat less when we take our time. We probably, when we eat better quality, even if it's ice cream, if, if it's better quality, you eat less of it. So the side effects of sugars and saturated fats are diminished by eating a higher quality, but, but less of it, whether it's chocolate or ice cream or steak, what, or french fries. Take, take your poison, choose your poison. Uh, if, you know, it doesn't matter. A little bit is never going to do us any harm. And if you enjoy it, that's, that's half the battle. So we need to, we need to think of the way we, we, we live. Uh, physical activity, I mean, nutrition cannot do it all. Uh, we're a sedentary people, most of us now. Um, we're in the car, we're at the desk, we're sitting in front of the TV, and, and that builds up the risk of diabetes. Obesity, diabetes, type 2 adult onset diabetes is the main risk factor for cognitive decline in the elderly. So Alzheimer's disease doesn't come out of, uh, of the closet one day. Uh, it's something that we are gradually preparing for, in a sense, by adopting poorer diets and by adopting a, a sedentary lifestyle. So they all interlock. It's, it's, a way, it's a way you live that's important. Now we're celebrating DHA but your book, Survival of the Fattest, pointed out that there's a range of nutrients in seafood. Just tell us about those. Well, there's a number of nutrients that are important for brain function, even if DHA never, didn't exist, even if omega-3s didn't exist. Uh, and this has been demonstrated over many, many years. The most important nutrient deficiency in the world today is iodine. It affects a fifth of the world's population, a billion people. Why don't we hear about it today? Because iodine has been put in table salt artificially by government legislation in I think all countries. Uh, it's not available to all people in all countries but it's legislated. Why is it there? Because iodine is important for the function of the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland regulates your body thermostat basically and it regulates the development of, of all the organs in particular the brain. So someone who's iodine deficient has less thyroid hormone and less thyroid hormone means slower brain development. So you don't achieve your mental potential. This was a very serious problem at the start of the 20th century. It was, we called it cretinism. That's what it was. People were cretins by the medical definition, very seriously mentally incompetent. And it was traced back to a single nutrient, iodine. Why, why was it in a problem? Because people didn't eat fish or shellfish. 
particularly in the United States, particularly in Canada, particularly in Western Europe. And it was finally, the, the code was cracked in a sense in, in the Midwestern states where fish was almost unheard of. And people realized that if they could get iodine in and it started the process of supplementation. So we've forgotten about it. That story's a century old now. But it's coming back to haunt us because we eat less salt, table salt now. It's supposed to be bad for blood pressure. We want to eat less fatty foods. Iodine's in fish and, and, and shellfish, but it's also in meat a little bit less. So you eat less meat, you eat less table salt, we're getting less iodine again, and we're sort of starting to repeat this old problem. It's not severe yet, but in Australia, in the United States, and in Western Europe, pregnant women are starting to show signs of emerging uh, thyroid hormone deficiency because they're not getting enough iodine. So iodine and DHA are found in the same foods, they affect the same organ, the brain, and it's the same story for iron, for zinc, for copper. These are all metals that you might say, oh my god, those are toxic metals, zinc, but zinc is an essential nutrient for some aspects of the brain, it's essential for the immune system, it's essential for the health of the skin, copper is important for the, for the, the insulation on a, on, a, on a nerve, and that insulation is called myelin, and if you don't have enough copper, that the myelin is not made correctly and you, you can't get the signal from, from the brain down to your leg or to run it to, to make an, a muscle work. So fish and shellfish are rich in the omega-3 fatty acid DHA and they're rich in a, a cluster of nutrients that we call brain selective nutrients which are all beneficial and work in concert to help the brain develop and we think to help protect the brain as we get older.